was asked recently how I produced this tune shader effect, which I did for a student film um, a couple of years back. It's a very easy thing to do, it's not too complicated. Essentially, it's a two-toned ramp shader that follows the light angle. So to demonstrate in the viewport here, um, then we have a simple spotlight, and essentially it's just the ramp shader will react to wherever the light hits. So one color will be produced for like the lighter side of it, and vice versa, there'll be another color produced for where the light isn't hitting. The shader's color, um, the brightness of it, will also be affected by the brightness of the light. So that is one thing to keep in mind as well. So to start, I created a blank scene to demonstrate it. So just for it's completely from scratch. Um, first, I'm going to create a helix. Just you can do any piece of geometry, just as an example. I've chosen the helix as it's just a nice piece for the shader to wrap around. So we bump into a hyper shading. You see, there's nothing in there. Nothing. It's completely new. If you look in the Tune tab, so in the Maya tabs at the top, there should be a Tune one. We want the two-tone light angle shader. That's what we're going to be working with. There are other Tune shaders available. I always experiment with other ones. This is just the one that I like to use because um, it gave the result I liked. So um, secondly, we're going to create a light. Um, you need a light in your scene. If you haven't got a light, then nothing will show up. So it's very, very important to have a light and understand that it's pointed at the object and also that the light has attributes that you would like. So the cone angle, if it happens to be a spotlight. Also the intensity does affect the shader as well, so you also may want to keep an eye on that as it's very easy to blow out the shader or equally underexpose it so it's, it'll appear like it's not doing anything. Okay, cool. Now let's jump over to the render view. Um, I generally like to do it in Mental Ray, I just find it gives it a bit of a nicer look. Um, the quality is a bit low, so in the render settings we can pump up to production quality just because we're not worried about render times as it is, and it's just nicer to see how it looks well. Okay. Let's minimize it so we can see what we're working with here. Lovely. Now I'm going to look at the um, some of the attributes inside the sh light angled shader. Okay, first we're going to look at the fall off. Um, so if you move the bar, as you can see, that will change that how much of the light is affected by the light in the dark, like the ratio of it. So the more the more darkness there is in the bar, the more darkness there will be in the shader, as you can see here. And if it goes the other way, that would be, it would go the other way. Um, okay, cool. So next we're going to look at colour. It's a bit of a self-explanatory thing. If you change the colour of each of the sides, it will change like the, the output colour. It doesn't necessarily have to be like dark, light and dark. Um, you, you can create some nice sort of effects with the light and dark, but equally you could use um, two, like a, a colour and a saturation, or equally you can use opposing colours, like complementary colours, to create various effects. It, um, it's really up to you how you use it. Um, it's quite a nice shader in that way. You can create a lot of things that are quite visually appealing. Um, so that part's completely up to you. Okay, so that's basically the gist of the shader. Um, there are a lot more attributes to it. If you scroll down, there's like trans you can alter the transparency, the incandescence, the specular, specular colours, the you can make them glow, there's shadows. I mean there's a lot more to the shader. However, a lot of these attributes are mimicked within other my shaders, such as uh, such as Lambert's or Blinn. So I don't really want to sit here and go through each of them individually. I don't think you know, if you want to find out more about them, tweaking is just a great way of learning about them visually. Or just go if you go Google a term, there's plenty of information out there on how to do things. Um, so that in mind, that's the basic gist of how the shader works. Okay, so back in Maya, essentially I've repeated the process for each body part or each separate colour system, like colour scheme that I, I want. Um, it's very easy to do. All you've got to do is select the faces that you want to have a certain colour for and just create a new material for that. You can see as I'm selecting different shaders here, different parts of the body are you know, have a selection on them. Um, I just want to quickly demonstrate the lighting as well as something that can get overlooked. Uh, obviously, as you increase the intensity, you can see here that all the colours will increase, and obviously, as you do decrease it, like they will decrease. It seems obvious, but it's something that does get overlooked. Um, okay, cool. As a final thought, I'd like to delve a little bit into texturing. Um, this is very simple if you just want a block colour. However, let's say you want to put like a Hawaiian T-shirt, or you want to you want to put some kind of like texture on it you will have to go a little bit further. Okay, so here we are inside of Photoshop. Uh, this is the UV layout um, for the model. It's not a very good example of a UV layout. I made it a very, very long time ago. But um, as an example sake, this is it. And essentially, we are going to create a light and a dark version of the texture we want. So um, I've created like a very simple 
Hawaiian, like generic Hawaiian um, texture that's going to go over the t-shirt, you can see here and essentially we have a light and a dark version um, I could go ahead and create co like a colour pattern or like colours for the rest of the body so that we only have to use one shader when we bring it back into Maya but um, as this is just an example I've just stuck to the texture t-shirt information so you can realise how to do it um, and this is just my version of how I do it, there's probably another, other ways but this is, is a way that works for me so you have a light version here and then also a dark version um, just saved off as another layer and basically once you have these two bits of information you can just save them off, I just save them off as like light and dark as TGAs um, with the, obviously with the UV lines hidden and then that will give you the information you need to then plug the texture back into Maya into the surface shaders which should work fine okay so back in Maya um, if we go into the hyper shade that's up here if we select the t-shirt um, tune shader get out this graph network, see there's got no connections plugged in at the moment, we can change that the black and white tab next to selected colour, we can use it to plug in a file um, first one's a dark one so we're going to plug in pre-saved off the dark t-shirt and you can see it appear there and plugged in then we'll repeat the process for the light one so create another file node for it it should appear soon and like I previously said we could use this to texture the entire character with just one shader um, so that's also another option depending on how you like to do things um, but you can also just separate them out if you like and um, here we go so if we bring this up a little bit bigger you can see that we now have a pattern that follows the surface the to the tune shading effect um, and matches the rest of the character so I'll just do it from another angle so you can see it better there we go so here we have it's not the best basically wrap texture but the, the principle behind it you should, hopefully you can see that's how you can do it so um, I hope you enjoyed this and see you next time.